For number 7a, we need to multiply both sides by the LCD. This will help us get rid of the denominators. In order to do that, <laughs> that bird is loud. Okay, 15 fact prime factors into 3 times 5. The prime factors of 10 are 2 and 5, and 2 is already prime. So our LCD has to have all of the fa prime factors of all of the denominators. So it has to have 3 times 5. It has to have 2 times 5. There is 2 times 5. And it has to have 2. 2 is already there. So that's 3 times 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10 times 3 is 30. So if mul we multiply both sides by 30, that means we multiply every term by 30, that will get rid of all of the denominators. So this reduces into 2. This reduces into 3. Oops. That's a 3. And this reduces into 15. So now we clean up. This stuff is nothing. Okay. So 2 times x is 2x minus 3 times x plus 5. So we have to distribute this negative 3 by x plus 5. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. So be careful when you, not only are you distributing the 3, you're also distributing the minus sign, that negative sign. It's greater than or equal to. By the way, we don't have to worry about flipping this inequality symbol because we are multiplying by a positive number. Now distribute the 15 to x minus 1. You get 15x minus 15. And then minus 8 times 30. 8 times 3 is 24. And put the 0. So that's 240. Now let's clean up some more. Combine like terms, 2x minus 3x is negative x minus 15 is greater than or equal to 15x. And combine these two and we get negative 255. So let's add the x to both sides. This way we'll get 16x, so that's a positive number. It doesn't matter. You could have put it on the other side, but I just like to put it where our x is going to be positive. And let me just get this stuff out of the way. Okay, so these two cancel. And let's add the 255 to both sides. So that goes away. So we get 16x is less than or equal to 240. Okay, and now divide both sides by 16. So that gives us x is less than or equal to 240 divided by 16, which is 15. To be sure, I would take a number that's less than or equal to 15 and plug it in and make sure that works. Okay, if this was a test question, I would definitely do that to make sure. Okay, now let's do B. B is very similar to 1, to A, so we're going to factor the denominators, the only one that we need to factor is this one. That's a difference of two squares. It factors into x minus 2 times x plus 2. So we multiply every term by that LCD, which is x minus 2 times x plus 2. So 
So here, this whole thing cancels. Here the x plus 2's cancel, and here the x minus 2's cancel. So 1 times x minus 2 is x minus 2, plus 2 times x plus 2, so that's plus 2x plus 4, equals, and here the only thing that's left is 1. So x plus 2x is 3x, minus 2 plus 4 is plus 2. Now subtract 2 from both sides. You get 3x equals negative 1. Divide both sides by 3. You get x equals negative 1 third. And I wanted to show you this on the calculator. If you press y equals and you put 1, under y1, you put 1 divided by parentheses, x, the x button is next to the green alpha key, minus, I'm sorry, plus 2, close parentheses, and then plus 2 divided by parentheses, x minus 2. And then in under y2, you put 1 divided by x squared minus 4. When you graph it, press graph, you see the graphs of these two equations, and their intersection is right here at negative 1 third. It's not so easy to see it on this screen, but when I did it on my own calculator at home, I was able to see it better. Now if you press second trace and you do intersect, which is number 5, and just hit enter three times. It says first curve, hit enter, it says second curve, hit enter, and hit enter for guess. And you see this negative 0 0.3333? That's this negative one-third that we got for our solution. Um, so uh, we know we did it correctly. Now going back to this problem, we're going to factor the x squared minus x minus 6. That factors into x minus 3 times x, mi x plus 2, because we want two numbers that multiply to give us negative 6 and add to give us negative 1. So we're going to multiply both sides by our LCD, which is x minus 3 times x plus 2. So x minus 3 times x plus 2 x minus 3 times x plus 2 and x minus 3 times x plus 2. So here the whole thing cancels. Here the x plus 2's cancel and here the x minus 3's cancel. There's nothing to distribute the 5 to so we just write 5 plus and we multiply plus 1 by x minus 3. We distribute, but there, 1 times anything is just itself. And here we have 1 times x plus 2. So this reduces into x plus 2, or 2 plus x, equals x plus 2. So when we subtract x from both sides, the x's are gone, and we subtract 2 from both sides the twos are gone, we get zero equals zero. Whenever this happens, we get zero equals to zero. We get a number equaling to itself. That's an identity. That means this is true, the original question is true for all real numbers, except we have to realize that our denominators cannot be equal to zero. So all real numbers except x equals 2 and negative x equals negative 2 and 3 cannot be the solution any other x can be a solution in order to see this graphically if we put in 1 i mean 5 under y equals we put 5 divided by parentheses x squared minus x minus 6 close parentheses, and then plus 
1 divided by parentheses x plus 2 and then go under y2 and put 1 divided by x minus 3 I'm going to go take the cursor to the left and I'm going to make change this line and make it thicker. I'm going to hit enter and that second graph will be thicker. We're going to graph it and you see both graphs are identical. They overlapped one another. That means any x except except negative 2 and 3 um, will work. You'll learn this better in pre-calculus, the graphing part of it, but um, for now just learn the algebra.